And now, the Gene Palmer Show, featuring penetrating interviews with outstanding people in the business world. Brought to you by Sutro and Company, the West's oldest regional investment firm, coming through for people since 1858. And now, Gene Palmer. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. You know, in the past, I've had quite a few drug companies on, but there is one I've been quite excited about having on my show. Maybe it's because the company has had an impressive growth, but maybe more importantly, the president of that company is a very colorful person. And in a, in a moment, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'd like to welcome Mr. Hewing Kaufman, who's president of Marion Laboratories Incorporated in Kansas City, Missouri, with that, Kansas City, Kansas, excuse me. You had it right the first In time. In Missouri, all right, I'm sorry. Mr. Coffin, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Gene. And as I said, you are a rather colorful gentleman, as is witnessed by your outfit here. Which, when you mention Marion Laboratories, let's go right into the questions. Exactly what type of business are you referring to? Well, originally, Marion Laboratories was completely in the pharmaceutical business, ethical prescriptions by the doctors. Since the last 10 years, we have diversified into what we call the health industries. This means not only pharmaceuticals, it's dental, it's fine agricultural chemicals, it's a safety business, hospital instruments, disposables, and so forth. So it's completely, but solely, in the health industry. How and why did you actually start Marion Labs? I believe it was sometime about, what, 25 years ago? 1950. It? Well, the how, the why is interesting because I worked for another pharmaceutical company which sold products directed to doctors. Worked on straight commission, no salary, no expenses. And I fell in love with the business. In the second year, I made more money than the president, which was a mistake. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I, they cut my commission. I stayed a third year and built it back up, and they cut my territory. So I quit and started Marion Laboratories. It was their loss, I assure yeah. you. What has actually been the growth of, of Marion Labs uh, in comparison, let's say, to other pharmaceutical companies? Well, in the last 10 years of the some 950 pharmaceutical companies, and of course I'm bragging, but I feel justified because it is Marion, we've been number one of all companies in percentage of increased earnings. We've been number one in percentage of increased sales. We've been number one on the return uh, on equity. We've been number two in sales per employee, but most importantly, because this measures the efficiency of an industry and how you perform, Marion Laboratories has been number one on profits per employee by over 50%, Which on is number two. Impressive. Very, very impressive. Are there any basic philosophies which you actually believe, well, that, are, that you feel that are very vital to a company? Yes. I'm almost like Billy Graham is about religion when it comes to the philosophies of a successful business. Because you can be successful in business, but you want to be happily successful. So I think there are two or three philosophies that should be followed for a company who wants to really achieve success and achieve it so that they can have their head high and be proud of what they've done. Not necessarily in this order, but let's say it is the inherent right of every worker who works for a company that he should share in the ownership of that company. Number two, those who produce should share in the profits which they help produce. But probably the most important, because it encompasses not only the employees, it's a philosophy of treat others as you would like to be treated. Now, this is a deliberate misquotation of the golden rule because it's not religious. Absolutely no connection with religion whatsoever. Treat your employees the way you'd want to be treated if you were an employee. Treat your customers the way you'd want to be treated if you were a customer. But if, treat your suppliers, the people from whom you buy the way you would want to be treated if you were a supplier. Treat your stockholders the way you want to be treated. And it isn't religious, it's just the finest business principle which to operate in the world. Now let me make one more statement. You'll get taken advantage of sometimes when you do this, but expect it. And in the long run, you'll be so much further ahead and so much happier that it's well worth it. You know, I was going to make a comment to that. I think there's only one other gentleman I've ever met who could bring it all together and say it as well as you have. And I've only got one thing. When can I go to work for you? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though, speaking about uh, uh, motivation is really what you're talking about, motivating companies and motivating people. Uh, don't you go around the country uh, literally talking about this uh, on a broad front to other corporations as well? Well, I get a lot of credit for what other people have done because it is recognized that Marion people 
are dedicated and work hard, and that's partially, a lot of it to do with motivation. But what most people don't realize, motivation is not one single thing. It's a lot of little things done day after day, month after month, year after year. See, once people get food, clothing, and shelter, the necessities of life, then money isn't the only answer. Some people still want money, but most people want other things. It's pride in their job, it's pride in their company, it's feeling that they're accomplishing something, doing something worthwhile for society. It's prestige, it's the respect of their people with whom they work. So motivation is composed of a lot of little things over a period of time. But people must work in an atmosphere where they're constantly challenged mm -hmm. and they Absolutely. know that mediocrity is not accepted. Very that much you so. won't accept it challenge them and really when you challenge them they'll work harder they'll give more and they'll even do more than they think they can so what you're saying then the, probably the greatest motivational force in the world is set forth challenges and let people live up to their uh, rather uh, up to those challenges is that what you're saying that's a you it's hard to say any one that's great but let me say the greatest motivational force in the world if you had to pick one single thing you wouldn't know, realize what it is it's a single attribute appreciation if people know that the things they do are appreciated and they are told and they are thanked, they'll just break their back to do more for you. For example, if our viewers, our husbands would go home tonight and tell their wives, darling, it's so wonderful the home you keep for me and I appreciate it all and the cooking and the dinner, they might be surprised how it would affect and what results would come. Gee, if I didn't know you were married already. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're a very, you've got a very convincing argument and you're absolutely right. That comes a little bit back uh, from your sales background, too. Well, you more or less had to learn that through your own growth in dealing with people all the time, isn't it? Well, I feel I'm people-oriented. I don't know as it comes from sales. It comes from a knowledge of people. It motivates me. I have people that ask me for help, and they go out and they follow the program, and they come back and say, Mr. Kaufman, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate it. You've meant so much. To well, I'll do anything for them because they appreciate it, I'll do more. And it's true with most people are that way. Let's go back to the company for a minute. All right. What do you feel are the greatest strengths, though, in your company? Well, of course, Marion Laboratories, it's completely dominated by people. It's, it's, you can have, I don't care how wonderful products you have, it takes people to do the production, the research, the sales, and that, everything else. So number one strength of Marion Laboratories is the management. Our top management is composed of some extraordinary people. We say it's an uncommon company because we take common people and through the association they become uncommon. And this is really true. But our management is so good and so strong and young. They're in their 30s and 40s. I'm the old man of the company. <laughs> there are three of us in the 50s. The rest of them in their 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. But that's probably our greatest strength. Number two, our marketing skills, because we're recognized in the pharmaceutical business as being one of the best marketing organizations there is. Number three is our research and product development department, who in the past 22 months have had food and drug approve three new drug products. Which in itself is a miracle. Yeah. Now, all right, now we've talked about some of the strengths, but you know, every company has some weaknesses. Yeah. And I think as long as you're being so outspoken, what would you consider some of the weaknesses of the company? Well, that's an excellent question, Gene, because that's what every analyst should ask, because every company has some that's problems. Right. And you're getting to the crux of the whole deal. Well, certainly in the pharmaceutical industry, with Marion Laboratories, our greatest problem is the regulatory affairs as far as the government, the state governments, and the food and drug are concerned. Uh, it is getting even worse today because instead of just regulating the drug products, they are now starting to regulate the clinicals, the research that you do prior to ever introducing a drug. Mm -hmm. There, it's going to run the cost of developing drugs at least 50% higher, and they're already too high or at the present time. So the regulatory affairs is our, is our greatest weakness, which is with all companies. Now let's get down to Marion Laboratories per se. I cannot think truthfully of any real weakness we have, except we're not foreign yet. We haven't gone overseas. We're just starting. So you could say that this is a weakness, and it is. But we're going to take it slowly. 
I'm not going to waste the money. When we go, we're going to make it profitable each and every year. And one other thing, you said something about uh, what other weaknesses. You're, you're basically a very outspoken gentleman, and I would assume a very driving force behind the company. Uh, would you give the impression, though, of being a one-man company to, let's say, the analysts yes. or anybody looking at the company? Well, that's a misnomer, and that's the same reason that I get credit for too many things that the people of Marion accomplish, and they give me credit for it. This was a one-man company, but I've worked for 15 years to change that because, after all, my entire state is practically bound up in Marion Laboratories, and mm -hmm. I'm not a stupid individual. I want it to continue after my, I am gone. So it is not. We have a tremendous management staff. My successor is already chosen. He's being tr trained gradually. He's been an executive vice president for a year and a half. Within another year, at the, two years at the most, he'll become president and chief operating officer. Within another two years, he may become the chief executive officer, with me still being chairman of the board. But today he does, he manages the company 60% of the time, and I only have 40% of the decisions that so I have no, to worry about. So what you've said is that you're really kind of dispelling that notion now. Even though you are somewhat the spokesman, there are, you have recognized that the company I'm is. I'm just kind of like the, the front piece for them. I, I, I was going to say, is there's no company that there's one man that's ever going to operate by himself. Well, if it is, it's a poor company. Yes, I agree with you. We only have time for one more question. I'm afraid I'm even going to have to make that even short. But what would you say was the greatest thrill that you've had in oh. 25 years of Marion Labs? August the 19th, 1965, Not Marion Laboratories <laughs> went public on the New York Stock Exchange at $21 a share. And that was my greatest thrill to think of a company that I'd started would do that. And that one share today has been split 12 times and even with a depressed market is worth $156. So that was a thrilling and a proud moment for me. Mr. Coffin, may I say oh, thank you, you very, very much for coming on the show. You make it easy to talk. Thank you. I hope all of you enjoyed it as much as I have. If you want to find out more about Marion Labs, and if you would like to, you can call me. Again, I'm Jean Palmer. My guest today was Mr. Ewing Kaufman, and he is president of Marion Laboratories. If you'd like some information, you can reach me either by letter or by calling. I'm in Beverly Hills, Sutron Company. And you can reach me in area code 213 Six five eight six two hundred, and I hope all of you newcomers out there who are now watching us, hopefully in the other cities, will continue to watch. In the meantime, stay well, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. That was great.